So, I was asked yesterday, and I knew exactly that it was my time. Um, and I knew exactly what to to read. Um, so it's John chapter three. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and say unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it come and whether it go, goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answer and say unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answer and say unto him, Thou art master of Israel, and knowest these things, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I told you of earthly things, and ye believe not, how can ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deed may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, where are the kids at? Okay, you can go to class. The others can't. So, solo mission to class. Amen. All right, kids, you guys are released. You may go to class to learn. Oh, thanks, brother. Appreciate that. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? You feeling kind of victorious today? Praise God. I'm feeling quite happy because it's just like God just keeps doing it and doing it and doing it. He just keeps doing it. And it's just like, okay, all right, God, I'm, I'm just going to just show up and just 
trust you more and more and more uh, because what I, I wanted to talk a little bit about today was, uh, was the gospel. And, and I truly mean just a little bit um, because we want to get to uh, our, our special guest um, and have them, uh, her, I'm trying not to give away a lot of information, um, share uh, what God is doing in her life and uh, how we can be a blessing and a support to that. But I wanted to, to talk a little bit about the gospel because um, just even the last testimony, testimony that Ian shared and then the scripture that um, Brother Malcolm read, it, it, it's basically a, 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 a kind of a snapshot of the gospel and then our purpose in the gospel. You know, we, we have a message that is meant to be proclaimed. It's, it's not just to be shut up in our bones. It's actually meant to come out of our mouth, right? It says we have the same spirit of faith, therefore we speak. And, and, and it's, it's so important that we understand, um, especially like coming from where I came from, that when I was not doing the gospel and then the way that I thought to do the gospel was to just go pray for the sick. And then I'd pray for them and then peace out. And I would never really ever mention anything about salvation, about repentance, about coming into the kingdom. And I always had this mindset that if I, if I just, if I can get them healed, then, you know, Holy Spirit will do the rest. Right? Holy Spirit will do the rest. I just, just do that and then, you know, back away and just let, let the Holy Spirit, you know, finish, seal the deal, so to speak. And, uh, but that wasn't Jesus's commission. Right? His commission, he didn't say go and, and set them up for the Holy Ghost. He said go and, and make disciples. He said, you know, in the same way the Father has sent me, now I send you. And he was sent to seek and save the lost. He was sent to preach the gospel. Jesus preached, preached the gospel. Right? He, 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 he told of the good news of the kingdom of God. You know, it's funny because Jesus didn't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. He preached the gospel of the kingdom which includes the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? And the word gospel just means good news. Amen? How many are thankful for the good news? How many are living in the good news? Praise God. And so, uh, you know, through, through some conversations that I've, I've had recently, I know sometimes it's one of the things that when, when, when you're in a, a, a kind of a, a, a full gospel, it's funny I say that, Full, when you're in like a full gospel vein, sometimes you don't always have a Sunday morning where you hear the gospel preached because we've already received the gospel. We've already believed the gospel. And as I look around, I'm like, okay, I know everyone's face. I know, I know we've already believed the gospel, right? So usually you won't hear a gospel presentation, right? And so sometimes it's, 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 it can be quite rare in a normal believer meeting to hear the gospel presented because it's a believer meeting, right? And so, and, and so that being the case, sometimes we don't hear enough of what the gospel is, what the gospel of the kingdom is, and how the gospel of the kingdom ought to be presented. Because, you know, you can, you can, you know, you can do the, the signs of the gospel of the kingdom. You can do the signs of the kingdom, but leave out the, 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 the purpose of the kingdom or the person of the kingdom, and it's only part of the message. It's only part of the, 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 uh, the, um, the goal or the purpose, right? And so the purpose is to bring Jesus to the forefront. The purpose, you know, the purpose... Uh, one of the purposes of, of, of the Spirit of God being sent is to bring glory and honor to Jesus. It says that it's the Spirit that draws men to Christ, right? And it also says it's the Father also, and the Father's doing it by way of the Holy Spirit. And so we have to realize that we have a, a, a gospel that's meant to be proclaimed. Turn to uh, Luke chapter 4. And as, you, as we're turning it together, I want you to be thinking about passages where you know in the Bible 
that really kind of give you a good picture of what the gospel is, what the gospel looks like. What is the gospel? You know, that's even a question I can ask. Like, what is the gospel? Like, we know what it means. It means good news, right? But what, what, what exactly is that good news? And this is the good news we're, we're meant to proclaim. So Luke chapter 4, uh, let's go to verse 18. And Jesus says this, he says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set free the oppressed to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then he rolled back up the scroll and dropped it like this. Bam. (laughs) Scroll drop, mic drop. Right? And he's like, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Like, man, who is this, who this guy think he is? Right? Little did they know. This is Messiah, son of God. Amen? But the reality is, and it's what we, what we had kind of uh, talked about earlier in, 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 in our praise and worship time, is that we're united with him. We're one with him. And, and we, we have the same DNA he has. Right? It says, by these exceedingly great and precious promises, we are partakers of his divine nature. It says that we are created according to the image of him who created us. It says that we are being conformed to his image. So we are being made like him. We have been made like him. So what's in him is in us. And so if what's him is in us and his mission has become our mission, then we can do the things that he did. Right? In the way that he did it. Amen. And so we too can declare the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Right? What did Jesus say? Or yeah, he said it. I got confused there. What did Jesus say in Acts about the Holy Spirit? You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit come upon you and you shall be what? My witnesses. Right? And so in the same way Jesus is saying the Holy Spirit is upon me because he has anointed me to preach and to proclaim, to say something. The Spirit is upon me, not just to shake in the power. The Spirit is upon me to to proclaim something. And in the same way, it's, it's similar to what he told his disciples. He said, you receive power, not so that you could just walk around and be powerful, but that you could be a witness. Right? Usually a witness has to testify. If you're a witness, who, who's ever been, been uh, summoned to do jury duty? J- jury duty. Jury, jury duty. Man, that was hard to say. Who's ever been summoned to do jury duty? I've never been summoned to do jury duty. Amen. Praise God. I've never. Have you? I've n- never. Oh, you have been? I've never. Jessica's, Jessica, you, she's had to go like how many times jury duty? I mean, you, I don't think you've ever went. Oh, one time? Yeah, like three times, three or four times. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I, they, just, they just can't find a brother. <laughs> they don't, I don't know. I don't, maybe, they, maybe they don't want me on that stand. You know, I could, oh, it, I would have some fun. I really would. <laughs> It'd be so funny. But, but when you're, when, when, when you're, when, when you're summonsed or let's say you're, you're called to, to, I will say I did one time when I was very young, I was at about the age of four, I did have to testify. I was a witness and I did have to testify. I actually had to testify against a family member. I had to testify against my dad in court when I was super young. I don't, I don't remember. I only know this because I was told. But, um, but, but I was a witness and a witness has to speak. Right? You have to share. You have to testify of the truth of what happened. Amen? So something happened in your life. Something happened in your life. The good news hit you. The good news did something to you. If not, you wouldn't be here today in the house of the Lord, lifting your hands, declaring the praises of the King. 
So somehow the, the good news did something to each and every one of our lives. And so now you have, to, you have the privilege of testifying as a witness to the good news. The good news of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, and what has done, what was, what's happened in your life, and what God has changed in your life. There's a, it was a, it, it, I don't know if it was a J.J. Lim thing or if it was just a, a thing thing or a Christian thing, but it's um, the, the saying that says, if the gospel, the gospel you preach hasn't changed you, then it, if it hasn't touched you, then it, yeah, if the gospel you, you teach ha- is not touching o- others, then it's not, I don't know, how does it go? If your gospel isn't touching others, then it hasn't touched you. Does that sound about right? Okay. That's the gospel that should, so, so I remember I was talking to a, a friend and we were, we're, just, we're just talking about kingdom stuff and I was trying to, to, to get his mind wrapped around the reality of the freedom that we have in the gospel. The reality of like, listen, bro, you don't have to, you don't have to live from bummer to bummer, from struggle to struggle, you know. Ups and downs, roller coaster Christianity is not something that Jesus ever taught or experienced, right? It's it's that's been the 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 um, what do you call it? experiment of of people who who don't believe the gospel, right? And we we've all been in that. I've been in that. My 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 birth date is coming up in a couple of days, March fourth, two thousand fourteen. That's when I truly got born again. And it was up until that point, I was living a, 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 a weak, real, I mean, I had a weak understanding of the gospel. And it was like, the, that night was the first time I heard the gospel ever preached that way in, in such a way and in such a power and such a gravity of the person who's, of, of their life that, that as they were witnessing it, it just impacted me in such a way and it completely forever changed me, completely forever changed me. Why? Because the gospel had touched that person's life. I completely trained, and I, could, I, I saw it, and it was undeniable. And it just what they were saying, it just, I was like, oh, my gosh, this is everything that I've ever thought is, could be possible of what I've seen Jesus teach, and I've seen the apostles teach, and yet everybody that I've known has lived outside of this and has actually lowered it to their own experience. It was like, it's amazing. Now I get to see the gospel for what it truly is, and it is that great. And so I was trying to, I was explaining this to, to this friend of mine, and, and, he, and he was like, he, he, he was kind of going back and forth, back and forth, because over the last 18 years of his life as a Christian, that just had not been his experience. Think about 18 years, just that's not been your reality. So then you've developed a, a, a Christianity that is in response to your experience, and even some of the experiences of people around you so then that's just what you live, and that's what you know. And oftentimes, that's what you defend. You defend a, a lower level of the good news because it's, it's your experience. And so I'm, 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 I'm talking to this, this brother, and I'm like, man, trying to share. I'm like, no, this, that, and this, this, and no, this, this is what. No, because what does the Bible actually say? What does the Bible actually preach? And isn't it? Well, yeah, I know, but it's like, no, no. Either that's true. Or it's not. And if it's not true, why is it in there? If it's not true, why is Jesus saying it? Is he the way, the truth, and the life? Then if he's saying it, then it has to be true. And then your experience is not. Okay, so why don't we, why don't we exalt his word above everything, exalt truth above everything, and then watch how your experience begins to line up with the truth through grace. But it's through your believing. Maybe you've lowered your belief system to a gospel that is, it's, it's okay news, not good news. It's I news. <laughs> Preaching the I news of the kingdom. It's I, you know. Listen, you're going to struggle. It's going, life's going to hit you hard. You know, it's I. <laughs> you know, c- come to Jesus. You'll be I. <laughs> That ain't that, no, it's good news. 
is good news. Man, I want to some. I want to hear some good news. That's that's one of the things that Jesus put dropped on my my spirit when I was out trying to like witness to people, and I'd go up and I'm like, because I my big thing is like I don't know what to say. Like, how do you start a conversation? Hi, my name is Othniel. Can I preach the good news to you? You know, it's like no, nah, that's not gonna work. So I, I mean, I you know, but the Lord said, you know, everybody likes good news, and I'm like, yeah, that's true. You know, I got some good news for you. You know, I'm like, hey, has anybody given you any good news? No, 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 not today. Well, I got some good news for you. Jesus loves you. You know, and, and, then, that, and then it would open up a conversation, right? He's always looking for that segue. But I remember I was talking to this friend of mine and trying to, and then, uh, and I, and I was trying to convince him of the reality because at that time, at that time we were going out, I was going out and he wasn't at, and I was going out, going out, going out, preaching the gospel. And he's just like, and I'm like, well, why aren't you doing that? And he goes, well, he goes, truth be told, because like, why would I try to, to, to bring something to someone that is not really working for me? Like, why would I try to convince somebody to believe something that's not, it's not really working? I mean, like, yeah, I'm going to heaven one day, but I'm still struggling with porn. I'm still struggling with, with attitudes. I'm still struggling with, you know, debt and fear and this and that and the other. And I'm like, yeah, that just has to do with your belief system. Your belief system is all jacked up. I said, because the, the good news is good. The good news transforms. The good news brings life. The good news brings healing. Kingdom of God is near. And that's a good thing. It's a really good thing. I said, so at some point, maybe you've just compromised your belief system and you're not believing what the good news actually tells you. So why don't we, why don't we work on that? But that, that was a true, I mean, it was, it was a true reality. You know, and I think there's a lot of people there. That, that it's like, well, why would I, you know, and, and there's some people that do it out of obligation because they feel they have to. But if it hasn't touched you, then, you know, what, are, what are you, you know, if, 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 if you won the lottery, you'd be pretty excited to let everybody know. Or maybe you wouldn't. <laughs> hey, you, that's a nice car. Oh, yeah. It, um, yes. <laughs> Well, I guess, I guess if you were a person that you knew, like Jesus, had unlimited access to whatever, you'd be happy to let people know. Because you too could have the same access. And that, that was the goodness of Jesus. He was, he was bringing them into the kingdom, not, to the, not trying to bring them into some religious structure or some fake religious system, but he was connecting them back to the God who loves them and bringing them into the kingdom, the fullness of the kingdom, where everything, where, where he takes what the enemy meant for evil, and he turns it for good. That's what happens when you enter into the kingdom. That's what happens when you connect it to your father who created you. And so we talk about, we think about the good news, the gospel. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Well, why? Why is the Holy Spirit upon me? Could you preach the gospel without it? Well, certainly not with the signs. Not with the signs accompanying. And certainly not with the words that the Spirit is promised to give you. So the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because I am anointed to preach the gospel. I'm anointed to preach the gospel. So maybe we should have a rethink. You know, I, I, I'm not just baptized in the Holy Spirit so I can be called a Pentecostal. I'm not baptized in the Spirit just so I can do signs and wonders because he says the Spirit of God is upon me because I have been anointed to preach the gospel. So there's something that I need to say, something that I need to declare, and it's necessary for me to have the Spirit in order to do it effectively. Does that make sense? He says, wait and you shall receive the promise of the Father, the Spirit of God. He says, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses everywhere you go. So we too have the Spirit of God so that we can what? Proclaim good news to the poor. To proclaim release to the captives. 
you're released, you're free to set at liberty those who are oppressed and proclaim you are ushering people into the acceptable year of the Lord's favor. You know, you can have favor with God. You know, it's, it's what the angel pro- proclaimed, peace, goodwill, uh, 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 and peace to all men upon whom, whom who God favor rests upon. That's the good news. Peace. Goodwill towards men. That's good news. So what is this good news? What does it look like? What ought, ought we to be saying? Is it just the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? That's not just it. That's a, that's a huge part of it. Because you got to remember that the, 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 the disciples weren't going around preaching the death, burial, and re- resurrection of Jesus Christ when Jesus sent them out. In the Gospels, right? They weren't going around saying, you know, Jesus, he he came, he died, and he resurrected from the dead because he hadn't done any of those things. And they were struggling whether or not they believed him in that, right? Because had they believed him, they would have been at the the tomb on day three, like, ooh, it's about to happen. That stone's coming open. He's coming up, baby. You know, but they weren't. They were all hiding. That even, 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 even the, uh, um, Mary, who went, she went to anoint his dead body. She wasn't thinking, okay, I'm coming because Jesus is, is he's, he's raised. She's like, oh, let me, let me go anoint his dead body. And then the stones rolled away, and she's like, okay, what's going on? And it's like, but Jesus told them that over and over and over again. So we see that the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus proclaimed and that he gave his disciples to proclaim wasn't just the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, they added that because that was an important, that was after the fact an important aspect of it. Because without the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, no one can be born again, John 3, 16. Having that conversation with Nicodemus. Nicodemus is like, yo, um, my man, my mama, she, she long gone. And even if she was here, what you're asking is weird. What you're talking about is kind of weird, bro. Ain't no way we, I'm going back in there and then coming back out. Like, and he's like, come on, bro. Low-level thinking, right? Low-level thinking. He's like, if, 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 if I, I'm telling you about earthly things, how can you be entrusted with true spiritual things? But he says, you must be born again. Right? And so what did Jesus, what did John come preparing the way? What did he, what did he come saying? What was, what, what was the, the first word he declared? Repent. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. And that word repentance, we know, means, yeah, change. Hey, guys, there's a necessary change that must take place. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Make straight paths for the Lord. Repent. Repent. Change the way you think. Right? And so what I often try to do is I try to give people a picture of what, the king, what it means to be in the kingdom. So when, if I had to just tell somebody, hey, just change the way you think, and they're like, well, I've been thinking this way my whole life, what's the other option? Okay, well, here's the other option. The other option is... We've been given by Jesus, by God, through Jesus Christ, the blessing of being who he always or created us to be. I go to somebody and I I go, listen, man, you know, you 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 ever deal with, you ever struggle with, with, you know, anxiety or worry or whatever the things, you know, sometimes you can, you can pick that out as people are talking, as you talk to people, because people like to talk about their problems. If you get people talking about you know, man, how's, how's life for you? Well, you know, it's all right. Well, it sounds like somebody gave you an I, I gospel, you know. It's all right, you know, you know, I'm struggling this, struggling that. And this. Okay, hey, did you know that you never have to struggle like that again? You know that there, there is, there's a place. And sometimes I, I come with people at the angle like, listen, you have to realize that we're all living way below our potential. That you are called to so much more. You're called to, 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 to live and to think so much higher. 
You're called to, to freedom. You're called to experience a, a, a grace and a, and a blessing and a joy that surpasses knowledge, that surpasses understanding. You're, you're called into a love that satisfies, a love that completes you, a love that makes you whole. That you're actually called to be above and never beneath. The head, never the tail. You're called to have a, a cup that overflows, a peace that surpasses understanding, and to be ushered into the presence of a God who loves you, and to be connected with him always, because that in his presence is fullness of joy, and at his right end pleasures forevermore. That's what you've been called to. That's what you've been predestined for, to be holy and pure before him. To be righteous, to be strong. Sorry, I anointed you. To be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. To always have a friend in time of trouble. To always have a place where you can cast your cares. A place where your, 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 your burden can be lifted. Come to me, all who are in heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Those are for all. That, that, those are, that, that, you have to remember, and I always look at it at the, from the standpoint of when Jesus, or when, 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 when God created mankind, he created mankind with a, a specific purpose to flourish, to be blessed, to be fruitful, not just, you know, in, in, in procreation, but to be fruitful in everything they do. And everything that, that man was, mankind was placed on the earth to do, not to be dealing with stress and fear and anxiety and depression and disease and disorders and all. That was never God's plan. So then I have to understand that when Jesus comes, he comes to redeem all things. He comes to restore all things. He comes to make all things new. So then I can get a hint and look back and go, okay, that was your plan for all mankind. And so that's still your plan for all mankind today. That's good news. That's great news. And it's not just about what God can do for you. Right? Because then you have, to, you have to remind them and tell them that, listen, apart from him, there is no living. There is no purpose. I mean, how many times? Just ask people, what, what, what's your purpose? What's your purpose? What are you living for? And the answers could be various. What's your, what's your purpose? What, what, are, you, are you living to make a difference in the world you're living to, or are you just living to get by? You're just living to get through. I'm telling you, that's, that's not what God wants. There's a good news that is meant to be proclaimed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Good news to the poor. And we've been given a good news that is meant to be proclaimed. It's a good news of salvation. The word salvation doesn't just mean going to heaven one day. The word saved doesn't just mean going to heaven one day. John 3.16, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.17. Uh, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Right? So what is everlasting life? What's everlasting life? Would you say it again? To know God. John 17, verse 3. And this is everlasting life. That they might know you, the only, one and only true God, and Jesus Christ, your son whom you have sent. So God sent Jesus so that we would know him, know the Father and know the Son. And if you know the Father and know the Son, then you know peace, you know life, you know joy, 
You know your purpose. You know the reason why you're here. And if you're living your purpose, it's the most fulfilled thing. When you go out and you witness to people and you lead somebody to Christ, man, it, 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 I remember the first time I, I did that out on the streets, I was freaking out on the inside. There was like a party going on on the inside. You know, there's, 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 there's believers that they've been Christians their whole life and have never led someone to Jesus Christ. Never. You're missing your purpose. That is a part of your purpose. Your purpose is to lead people to Jesus. Your purpose is to declare a gospel that is salvation. The word salvation, the word saved, means healed, delivered, protected, preserved, made whole, kept safe, and sound. That's good news. You need protected? Well, there's a Savior who came. And he died for you. He gave his life for you so that you can be found in him. And in him is everything you need. In him is everything you want. And even as Christians, man, we have a purpose. We have a gospel that is meant to be proclaimed. We have a gospel that's meant to be spoken. I mean, I already already quoted this. It says, having the same spirit of faith, we believed and therefore we speak. So if we have the same spirit of faith, then we have the, the privilege and even the responsibility to speak. To speak what? Liberty to the captives, the gospel, the good news. The good news. And that good news I pray, has touched your life. I pray that good news is touching your life, that you're seeing a freedom, you're seeing a a truth being expressed in you and through you. If you let it. You got to see, it's it's not automatic. Because again, like I've shared, I mean, mean, I'm sure we could go across the room and share testimonies of where we've had bumpy road Christianity. We've had Roller coaster Christianity, I did for the majority of my life until I, I, I started to, to get right here and get right here. And then I realized, wait a minute, this, this gospel is meant to be believed. This gospel is meant to be believed. God is meant to be believed. He's meant to be trusted. And if I believe him and trust him and take him at his word, then I will see the very things that the gospel says I'm to see. Salvation, fruit, freedom, wholeness, hope, joy, peace, all the fruit of the Spirit. All the promises are yes and amen in Him. But my my ultimate purpose is to know Him. And if you know Him, what is it? I've seen people wear this this, this shirt. It says, uh, no God, no peace. No God, no peace, and then it says, no God, no peace again. So if you don't have God, then you don't have access to those things. But if you have God, you have access to everything. And, and the, 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 the best part of the gospel is knowing. The best part is knowing him. The best part is knowing you have a heavenly father who loves you, who's for you who's with you, will never leave you, never forsake you. And when that's touched your heart, when you've been touched by that truth, man, you'll want to give it away. It's like you got the the cure to COVID. (laughs) Well, we do. And that's truth. You got the cure to COVID. (laughs) And believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And so when you preach the gospel in such a way that it is actually good news, like, no, you know you can make a difference in your family. You know you can end poverty in, in your bloodline, in your generation. You know you can break every curse. You know you can be a light in the dark places, in your home, and in your workplace. But the way through is repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe. 
What does it say in Romans chapter 10? If you believe in your heart and confess with your that Jesus is Lord, you shall be sozo. Healed, delivered, protected, preserved, made whole, kept safe and sound. You shall be saved. You shall be saved. And this is the gospel that, that, that is supposed to be, have had touched our lives. I mean, I, 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 most, I think almost everybody in here has experienced some manifestation of the gospel of the kingdom of God in their lives, healing, provision. I mean, we, we have the testimonies rolling through, you know, every Saturday, every Saturday, every Saturday. The testimonies of what God is doing, what God is doing, what God. Don't forget what God has done. Don't forget that that is a part of the good news. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing soon. please. But that's the good news. Somebody say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I am anointed to preach the gospel. I am anointed to bring liberty to the captives. I am anointed to set free those who are oppressed. I am anointed to heal the brokenhearted. I am anointed to cast out devils. I am anointed to heal the sick. I am anointed to raise the dead. These are all the things that Jesus entrusted unborn again people to do. And yet they could not say at that time, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And here we are, we can. I mean, they were able to after the fact. But we can. We can. And as, as it was true for Jesus, it's true for you. It's true for me. The spirit of God is upon me. I am anointed to do these things. You are anointed to be free yourself. Somebody, you can say that. I'm anointed to be free. You are. I'm free. I've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his dear, his dear son. That's where I live. The enemy tried to look for me. He come up against my big brother, Jesus. Uh, I think I got the wrong house. <laughs> yeah, you're playing that. That's what I love about just everything that the Spirit has been saying is just the reality of, man, if I'm in Christ, man, he, ain't, he knows better. Just like they knew better to mess with Jesus. Jesus wrote on the scene, who, you know, who, we know who you are. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of the Most High God, have you come to torment? That's the only thing they were thinking. Have you come to torment us? Yeah. Th think about the authority. Think about how they saw him. Have you come to, to like, not, have you come to bargain? And, you know, no, have you come to, to that's all they were. Have you come to torment us? Because <laughs> they knew. They knew what was up. That's who you're in. That's who's in you. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Unlimited. That's the good news. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Don't waste what God has given. Don't Think as, don't, don't account the Spirit of God as common. He gave him to you as a, as a down payment, as a seal of what, was, what is to come. He's here to help. He's here to help us to proclaim this gospel, to preach it, and to, dis, and to demonstrate it. And we'll, we'll probably, if, if the Lord permits it, talk about 
the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. We'll, we'll define through the parables that Jesus teaches what is this gospel of the kingdom. Because you remember after Jesus, uh, no, it's not, not after he ascends, but well, at least for the first time, he goes and then he comes back and he's kicking it with the disciples, says he was kicking it with them for how long? Who knows? 40 days, right? And what did it say he was talking to him about? Kingdom. The kingdom. There's something important about us understanding this kingdom, this kingdom that we've been given, this kingdom that he says, in this way, pray. That kingdom come, that will be done. Where? As it is in heaven. On earth, as it is in heaven. It's about the good news. The kingdom has come. Repent, for the kingdom is here. The kingdom is here. Your life can be different. Your life will be different. And the only way is born again. Born again. Born of above. Born of God. So we have a priv- the privilege to declare this kingdom, this kingdom, this gospel that sets the captives free. This gospel that heals the brokenhearted. This gospel that brings people into the Lord's favor. This gospel that it removes oppression. It removes darkness, takes, calls people out of darkness into light. It transforms their nature, transforms the why behind their life. But we have to be touched first by the good news. Somebody say today, I'm letting the good news touch me. I'm letting the good news transform me. I am every day. I pray, Lord, thy kingdom come. Lord, give me, give me that daily bread. I receive it. Thank you for it. And then I have what I need to distribute. Hallelujah. And so, we have the privilege to um, be in the presence of someone uh, whom we love very dearly. And um, there's going to be ample opportunity to support what God is doing through uh, this individual's life. And um, it's, it's, it, it is a privilege to support those who know their purpose and know their call and uh, to support what they're doing for the gospel uh, because, because of relationship that I've, we've had, many of us have had with this person, it's like we know that what, what, what this person is stepping into is going to transform nations, transform nations. And we know this through prophetic words, uh, and, and, and we, we, just, we, we, we just, we know this from knowing the person. And so, and like I said, we're going to have an opportunity to, to hear and to support. And so, um, but in order to do that, we have to go offline. And so, um, I'm going to pray for those who are following online right now, and then we're going to cut the live stream, and then we're going to continue on in here, and we're going to uh, hear uh, the heart of a, an evangelist, and then, uh, and then we're going to see how we can get involved with uh, the mission uh, to, to uh, preach the, the, the gospel everywhere. Amen? Amen. If, if you can't go, there's people that you can support that are willing to go. And that's, that's some of the, the reality and the beauty. Like I was reading yesterday, and it, and it talked about the, the women that supported Jesus. Now, these women weren't going, but they were supporting Jesus because Jesus was going. Jesus was going, and the disciples were going. You know, so, and that's not, again, that's not an excuse for doing our part. You can do what you need to do here around Plano or wherever you're from. But, uh, but our, we have a privilege to come alongside and support those who, are, uh, who have taken upon themselves to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I feel called to go. I'm going to go. So um, I'm going to pray for those online, and then uh, we'll dismiss you online, and then we will continue here in person. So, Father, we just say thank you for the gospel. Thank you, Father, for the, 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 the good news that sets us free. 
We thank you, Father, that your spirit is upon us. You have anointed us to be proclaimers of this good news. And, Lord, we commit, Lord God, to opening our mouths as you've declared, and you will fill it, Lord God. You said don't prepare beforehand when we have to go before leaders or, you know, people. And you said you would give us the words to say. You said that you would give us a wisdom um, that our adversaries will not overcome. So, Lord, may we change the way we think, and may we trust you. Uh, that you will give us the words to say. And we thank you that you have empowered us to be uh, witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the good news, and that, Lord, we shall be proclaimers of the good news. And so I bless all those who are watching. Father, I pray, Lord, if there are any that come across this and do not know you, Father God, may they decide, make a decision to go from light to dark, to go from uh, uh, alienated from God to a son a daughter of the Most High God, that they would know you, that they would put their faith and trust and hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the author of our salvation and the finisher of our faith. And so, Father, we bless you. We bless those watching. We, we, we come against and speak uh, that every ailment, every oppression, every disease, every lack will be cut off from our people's lives, those who are watching. We declare blessing, prosperity, health, and life over them in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen.